Have you recently found a gaming news article that made you think, wow, this is as useless as can be? Well, I know I have. So I wanted to discuss it with you guys and talk about the gritty state gaming journalism currently is in. I think most of you will remember where IGN got a certain meme from with their review for Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, in which their one bad thing or one of the bad things they had was that there was too much water in a Pokemon game. In the Pokemon game that had like the legendary Pokemon that was a water type. And I think like that was in 2014 and a real turning point for gaming journalism because at that point it was still quite credible. Back in the day gaming journalism was about one thing and that one thing was gaming. Every article, every review, every piece of news that they were pushing out was just about that. You had, is this game any good? Should you play this game on this difficulty or with this modifier? Here's an indie gem you should know about. Like those were the type of articles that they would talk about. Nowadays, they're pretty much just bought off all the time. Let's not forget that IGN gave Cyberpunk 2077 a 9 out of 10 on release. That game was as buggy and broken and just an absolute mess. And they gave that a 9 out of 10 saying there were a few small bugs in the game. That's just one example of bad games getting good reviews from these studios purely because there's big companies pushing these games out and the journalists, well, they want to keep those benefits of being able to have review copies of said games so they give good reviews and then the studios are like oh yeah thank you here our next game we'll also get our copy despite them blatantly lying to their audience to their customers in a way but then you also have just the obnoxiously bad takes that these people have and recently there has been some news that was just insane i think it was GameSpot that talked about black myth wukong and about the fact that it does not have enough inclusivity this is a game based off a religious tale and it's about a monkey god and there's not enough what what, what would you expect I, I really don't understand what they wanted here i remember that they also talked about not be enough females being in the game this is a fantasy game this wasn't something that was talked about in 2019 when Sekiro Shadows Die Twice came out, right? Because I don't think there's any colored people there. There are a few females, but most of them aren't female. So that wasn't a problem back five years ago, but it is a problem now because they want to push their agenda, right? They want to make sure that you understand that this is wrong despite it not actually being wrong. Not to mention that both Concord and Dustborn, which are absolute flops for their own reason, they're getting literal articles written about them, how you should really play them because they're oh so good and everyone should play them and give it a chance, but it costs 40 bucks to play a game that has been done by other studios eight years ago. These people have no credibility left, and I feel like no one really listens to them. Let's take a look at IGN, GameSpot, Kotaku, The Verge, you name them, they have no credibility. People will laugh at certain things that they say, and every comment section on Facebook, on Reddit, or whatever you find these articles on are filled with people who are just laughing at these comments companies they're just like okay you're not a real journalist you're trying to get clicks by saying things something weird like the ones who talked about the whole drama with black myth wukong about the developers having some sort of sexism to them when it was just a bad translation don't want to get too much into the actual thing that happened here with black myth wukong but it is something that recently happened in the news and it's something that i feel is so just disgusting like how this can actually be put pushed out by the number one biggest gaming journalist, which are, is IGN, and they just push out an article that is pretty much fake. I don't understand. I don't know if it's still online, if you can still find it, but it's insane that it was even pushed out, that like people saw this. This isn't an article that someone writes and that no one checks before they push this out. IGN checks this shit. Multiple people looked at that article, at like that bad translation and said, yup, push that. I don't understand. These are people with agendas and they're doing things 
that just goes through the cracks it seems or it's just the entire system being corrupt now i know that i only really give my own opinion in my videos but i did ask a friend of mine called quintio to give his two cents on the situation so let's look into it so um yeah my first question here is like do you feel like when you look at gaming journalists are they discussing the wrong things like yeah yeah <laughs> like nine times out of ten because it's yeah. either they're either doing some interesting stuff where they're talking about like too much water being in a pokemon game or specifically as of recently the the black myth wukong not enough diversity in a cast of like historical legends it's just like okay but like is the game good? Does it play well? Like, should I buy it? I like a lot of people really couldn't care less. I mean, it's just like there was a game, maybe it's Devil May Cry, where people were joking. It's like even the people who are reviewing these games aren't good at them because like there was one and it was specifically they uh, they talk shit about the music track or like the, the soundtrack of I think it was Devil May Cry. And the whole thing is if you're not good at the game, the music never picks up because it's like it's based off your combos and whatnot. So they rated the soundtrack as being absolutely horrible. And everyone's like, this idiot was so bad at the game that they never heard like at least half of what was what music was actually in the uh, in the in the game. Yeah, 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 I think you got like the same thing with uh, Cuphead. Cuphead was also like one yes. of those games that like reviewers were like, oh, it's way too difficult. I couldn't get past the tutorial. And it's like, oh my God. And why are you here reviewing yeah. the game? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was like my next question with like the Black Mid Wukong stuff. Because it's just, it's way too overdramatic with what it is. And it shows like people don't really care. Yeah. And, and the review doesn't, th clearly the reviews don't matter. Like they don't have any weight. Because if they did it wouldn't, you know, be battling in the top, what is it, like the top three for most concurrent players in like this time frame? Yeah, that's two million uh, people yeah. playing it. And clearly the reviews that are saying, no, there's not diversity. Like it's just the person reviewing it that thinks that because the rest of the people that are, you know, engaging with the game are playing it and they're too busy enjoying it. Like it's stupid. Next up, my question, because I can't seem to find anything um, is there like any article you can think of that is like good or useful that like helped you out in the latest, I don't know, I'll give you like a time span of like five years to maybe find one. It's, there's a lot that I'll find on, um, it's like this game review website called Reddit. It doesn't have any game reviewers on it. You just uh, ask your question and then a general population of people that do not do game reviews professionally will give you the most authentic and realistic reviews of the games you're asking about. No, I haven't been able to touch a single game review channel with a 10 foot pole in like the last like five years because it's always like a ton of ads, the worst takes on video games or the reviewer is incapable of playing the game correctly to get the experience. And instead I'm going onto Reddit being like, hey, was this game worth it? And then the the discourse between people agreeing, disagreeing, or like, you know, just talking about their experience with the game is more substantial than anyone that's getting paid to do it as a professional. I, I personally really, really agree. But like, I've always thought to myself, like, why is this also like happening? Because I feel like it's something that like when you look back, maybe like 10, 15 years ago, it kind of was maybe a problem. But now it feels like just the vast majority is just really bad. Well, I think it comes down to incentives because like the incentive here is to get attention and clicks because that gets ads, right? Like they they just throw a lot of ads like 10, 15 years ago. It was just to share info like no one was making money like ad, you know, sponsors weren't showing up, you know, ads were not going to be placed on a wiki that was literally just sharing like info about a specific game. As we progressed and, you know, um, companies were like, oh, we could stick our ads on the sides of, you know, a document. And then it turned into, well, if we get more people to look at it. Let's just start clickbaiting. So then, you know, I mean, clickbaiting's always exists, but that's what it turned into for like, uh, like an article on a website. Well, number one, they have to like pump out so many reviews because the gaming industry is huge now. There's a ton of games to review. So now, you know, you've got maybe good journalists, but terrible gamers. And then in now they're bad journalists because they're not getting, you know, good info on the game. But, you know, there needs to be 30 of these people. So quality goes down, you know, quantity goes up. And then they also were like, well, if we keep them on the website long enough, we'll get more ads to roll. If we have dog 
opinions, uh, people will be like, oh my God, that's terrible. And then they'll want to go see the the horrible opinion for themselves. And then we get another click and another ad gets seen. Yeah. It's like, if you incentivize it like this, like this is what happens. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's just greed and, and just people wanting more money, I guess. And it, it's also kind of cause like, I feel like no one anymore kind like trusts big gaming news outlets anymore. When you look like IGN GameSpot or anything like it. When it, when it's a bigger company, I think everyone rightfully so gets into their head. Oh, they got sponsored to do this review. Cause like, the people you know that are creating those games knows how important a good review is. I think it's kind of shifted now because you'll even see fake reviews in Reddit now, but pe people will call them out. But um, like they they see the value there, and then the company's like, <laughs> "Let's jeopardize our integrity!" Hell yeah! Like we'll find the one moron out of you know our hundreds of employees that like maybe has a mildly good take on a game, and then out of bad faith being like. Well, you know, either, you know, they're actually getting paid by the sponsors to have their game reviewed or it's like, a, you know, we're going to generously gift you and talk well. And it's like that mutual uh, we'll rub your back if, if you rub ours kind of thing. Um, and then they, you know, find the one moron that's going to give it a good take and then publish that to make them happy. It's like burning your core audience. Yeah. You don't actually get to develop loyal people because you're clearly so willing to sell out. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you get like a big, you get a big review because, you know, too much water, uh, but nobody comes back because no one's going to take you seriously anymore. Yeah. One thing I just like to ask is like, is there anything else you would really like to let go about gaming journalists now that you can? I don't know a single one of them by name. I barely know the gaming outlet names. I literally just go to Reddit. Like, it's just, I truly do not trust gaming outlets. Yeah, it's like, become that trivial. Seriously, like I don't trust big YouTubers because like it's they have to put that they're sponsored. But the odds of you finding a really big video about a game that you're looking to play um, that they aren't kind of even just, you know, saying is good. I really just get used to looking at a bunch of reviews. I look at positive and negative. Like I will search for the worst and best takes of a game just because like you can't really trust anything anymore other than just like knowing a person and hearing what they have to say game reviewers y'all suck eggs and uh do better please so yeah if you don't want to take it from me take it from quintio here who is also an absolutely amazing youtuber and who you should subscribe to because he makes some amazing commentary videos that was our two cents on the issue at hand here though i want to know what you think so leave your opinion down in the comments below do you feel as if they indeed do not have any credibility left or are you someone who actually still listens to what these big companies have to say and while you're down there why not also subscribe for more commentary gaming commentary just like this and if you did enjoy this video i have another video right here that i feel like you really really enjoy about an indie dev getting review bombed for a very stupid reason so why not click on it you'll probably enjoy it and i'll see you there